So what we have here is a porcupine den. And you can see some of his old tracks going off that way. And uh, he's been here for at least a month or more. And I've been seeing a lot of porcupine this year. And uh, nothing wrong with porcupines. A lot of people don't like them because they can damage trees. Uh, they'll kill some trees every once in a while, but unless you get a ton of porcupines, it's not a big deal. But as you can see, those tracks lead to here. And then we got a big old ball right there. So, I've been seeing so many this year that uh, I just don't want to pass it up. So, I'm going to try and uh, see if I can get a shot and turn them into dinner. Okay, so just wanted to show the damage that porcupine does. And so here you can see where he's stripped a bunch of bark off bunch of different branches and so they are capable of taking too much bark and then it'll kill the tree and uh, nothing wrong if it's every once in a while but as many porcupines as I've seen this year I'm gonna go ahead and harvest that guy. Here's a little bit better look at the porcupine. So I went up a little bit of a ridge so I'm more on his level and I'll attempt to make a shot in a minute here. This is my new trap line gun. And uh, it's a HD military by high standard. It's a 22 long rifle. And uh, it's my new trap line gun. So that's what I'm going to use to harvest this porcupine. Okay, and so shooting the pistol. I want to make sure that I'm braced, so I'm going to lean up against this tree, shoot at the porcupine, and uh, very important, know your target and what's beyond. I know that there's a whole lot of nothing on the other side of it if I do miss, but hopefully I hit him, and then the bullet's not going anywhere. But uh, taking my time, aim, brace myself, and uh, see if I can get that porcupine. Okay, so here's the porcupine, and uh, it fell, and then I came down right away, put another shot in its head just to be sure, and uh, it's a nice looking one. Not huge, but pretty decent size. And on the tail there, you can really see all those quills, but uh, very nice animal. So. Thank you for giving yourself up to us and get a couple of nice dinners out of it, but cool animals. Okay, so for anyone wondering how the heck do you clean a porcupine, uh, I've got started here already, but uh, the bottom side of them doesn't have the quills. So you grab a, the feet, you cut around the feet, and then you uh, skin it, go up. So you're cutting each leg in the middle until you can pry it apart. At which point you want to try and just get the skin to come off as easy as you can. And uh, you don't want to gut them if you don't have to until after you've got them skinned. Makes it easier. And then just make sure any part you are grabbing is parts without quills.
And then I'm just pulling the skin loose, which I've got around his head and back is loose. All right, and now he's loose, so all I need to do, got the tail off, cut the head off, got the feet off, ready to go. Okay, there we have the carcass. Now I just need to gut him, which you wanna do Whole, rather than splitting the whole thing open. Okay, and now <clears throat> this bit is a little bit tricky. But what you want to do is when you split the carcass open, you don't want to open the guts up like you would when you usually are cleaning something. So you go just barely under it, and then you'll see there's a membrane that is encasing all of the guts. And so you don't want to pierce that. You want to adjust the meat, expose the membrane, and then you want to by hand just kind of peel that membrane off of the inside. Then you can <clears throat> take all the guts at once and dump them out of the body without getting them all over everything and kind of funking up your meat. So, it's about ready to go here. I'm just going to move it to the side. And there we go. Everything came out at once. Inside is nice and clean. And uh, now I just gotta take the feet off and this is a cleaned and ready to go porcupine. So, that is now one cleaned and ready to go carcass. And if I'm careful here, there's one porcupine pelt. And you don't want to leave them in the wild here. You don't want something getting into it and getting a face full of quills. So usually people either burn them or you keep them and uh, collect the quills, but you don't want to just leave that laying around for something to find. But uh, successful harvest, happy about that. So there we have the porcupine pelt, pretty good size and uh, even managed not to get quilled the whole time I was cleaning it. But there you go. That's how you get a porcupine, that's how you clean them. Looking good. So I have a porcupine pelt here. And some people like to do this uh, when the porcupine's whole, but I already cleaned it, so this is just the pelt. Uh, but what you want to do is nail it to a board, and you want to nail it, so this is the tail, you want the tail up. Nail it to a board so it's nice and firm, and then that'll help so you can collect the guard hairs and the quills. So why would you want to collect guard hairs or quills? You can sell them, but uh, I'm donating mine to an Ojibwe artist, and he's going to use them for quill work and other traditional items. 
Um, but you can sell them. But step one, you want to get guard hairs, and then you scrape quills. Uh, so to get guard hairs, it's incredibly simple. You literally just pinch and pull, and just wiggle a little bit as you do that. They come out, and they're pretty long, about three, four inches long. Uh, some of them will be up to about six inches, and you'll end up with roughly half a fistful of guard hairs. This is about all you get. Um, but they'll use those usually for traditional headdress type items. Uh, but you want to remove all your guard hairs, and then after the guard hairs are removed, then you scrape the quills off. And so I can show you how to do that. So pluck in guard hairs, you're just pinching and pulling, getting all the long hairs out. And they're nice and long, you're not worried about getting quilled. And yeah, you'll end up with about half a fistful maybe. But just pinch and pull is all you're doing, doesn't get much simpler than that. Alright, so there's the guard hairs. Really nice looking, got good color to them. And as I said, you get about half a fistful total. But really nice looking. And they're. Oh, the long ones are probably about six inches long. Now we'll move on to collecting quills. I'm just looking at the porcupine pelt after I pulled all the guard hairs. And I uh, just want to show you, a lot of people will tell you that all the dinosaurs evolved into birds, but look at that, and tell me you don't think of a stegosaurus in a previous life for this guy. But now we're going to collect those quills. Okay, we got the guard hairs off, now we're going to collect the quills. And so to do that, all you're going to do is you want to take your knife, and you're just going to start scraping and as you scrape the quills are going to start to just come right off of there especially once you get a little fall patch made and you want the roots intact so you're not cutting the quill you're just using the knife to gently brush the quill off of the skin, and then just collect it into your bucket, bin, whatever you got, and then after you do that, you'll have to remove the quills from the hair, because the hair doesn't have any value to it, but that's all you're doing, just scraping. Fully but surely, working my way down here, and again, you're just doing little brush stroke motions with the blade, you're not actually cutting the quills because you want the root to stay in it. You're just using the knife to gently pry out the quill from the skin. You just keep doing these little brushing motions. Just work your way down until you get all your quills clear. Really stuck, you can always grab a pliers, but as long as you got your pelt nice and firmly attached, not too bad. Just do a little sweeping, makes it nice and easy. Okay, so now we're done dequilling, and so started at the base of the tail, worked our way down to the base of the neck, and that's all you take. You don't need to worry too much about the sides, those tend to be smaller quills. And, um, yeah, you just scrape with the knife, work your way down, put them into a bucket. Got a whole bucket full of quills now, but uh, I need to separate the quills from the hair. Not a super easy way to do that. You gotta kinda just spread the quills out and pick them out of the hair. But uh, once you do that, then we'll be done. And sorting porcupine quills, you just 
pulling them out of the pile, making sure they don't have hair on them. And if you look, this is the end with the barb on it, the black tip. And the other end looks a little bit pointed, but that's it doesn't do anything, that's just what connects it to the porcupine. And it's connected loosely, because obviously if they stick something that comes out of them really easy. But they're a hollow tube, uh, they're just a hair that's adapted, is all that a quill is. And so, black end is pointed with a barb, so you don't want to get stuck with that. And then the other end just has a little tip that holds it into the porcupine skin. Okay, there's all the quills, and you can see there's not a bunch of hair on them anymore. Got them sorted through, and those are all the nice wide ones which can be used for crafts and other things. All the small ones have been discarded along with the under fur. And so we'll uh, get those packed up and ready to ship off to our artist. So here's our final product. Got it. Uh, in this jar. Just had to uh, shimmy them until they kind of lined up to be able to fit them all. But uh, we got probably just under two ounces of quills, but considering that they're hollow, it takes a lot to add up to any amount of weight. And uh, the black tips are where the bar bends are, and uh, should be real nice for our artist. And then we got our guard hairs. And so we're gonna get these shipped off and they'll be used to uh, make traditional Ojibwe crafts.